Hello and welcome back to Warsword Conquest. I finally found a Night Goblin Vassal because we need that for the quest. So hopefully we're going to be able to actually achieve victory here. This is going to be a bit of a difficult one. He's got 68, so he does outnumber us, which is obviously bad. Because generally, um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you, but I personally would like to outnumber goblins as Skaven if you can. Because obviously that's going to make it a lot easier. But hopefully I just have some really, really good troops. Ooh, we actually have a battle advantage of minus one. I do have some Necropolis Knights, by the way, that I managed to rescue from a goblin warband just now that I fought. And uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking that's pretty good. I'm thinking that's all right. You know, maybe that's going to be fine. Can we kill the... Yes. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, we did such a good job. We did such a good job killing those two. And now he killed me. All right. Well, let's just go straight back on in. There you go. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. Mm, that was classic. I, I mean, that's the thing, okay? I see this happening, right? I can see it right in front of me. And I'm thinking to myself, hmm, do I want to try to avoid him? Do I want to try to dodge or block or something like that? Most of the time the answer comes back, no, not really. Because otherwise I would have probably missed one of the squig riders and then maybe that would have actually made things worse. But I don't know how it could have gotten worse, because we literally just, well, we died, you know. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's going to go better this time. Anyway, let's just move these guys up here. The cavalry, we basically have no cavalry, we've got three cavalry, but that is hopefully going to be a little bit... Oh, they've got magic now. Okay, they've got some magic, this might be a bit problematic. Okay, we'll see. Going to move my forces up, uh, hello, ooh, okay, you're actually trying to kill me with that, whoever that is. I have no idea who that is, but hopefully my um, my gunners will actually start doing some damage. Can I do some damage? Yeah, there we go. We actually killed someone. Nice, nice. Okay. Uh, maybe I want to get out my long rifle, actually. Oh, there we go. There come the other fellows over there. Let's tell these guys to charge in. Oh, we got venom damage against us. Bear in mind, I don't actually have any um, any healing potions or anything like that. So that's probably pretty bad. But I can just try my best. We can just try my best and I can just go in here, try and do as much damage as possible, try and help out our infantry as much as we can. Obviously, Poisoned Wind Globideers are obviously making a huge difference here. Oh, oh, hello, hello. All right, wait a minute. Wait a minute, we're fine, we're fine. They're, they're actually casting some, uh, they're casting some spells right now. I'm not a big fan of that, actually. The Night Goblin Shaman is actually casting some stuff. So that's definitely going to make a huge difference. Uh, thankfully, though, <laughs> we seem to be achieving victory here. Now, here's the here's the big deal. A warplock engineer was killed by a warplock engineer. Okay, I'm kind of a, not not a big fan of that actually, but there you go. All right, so we did manage to achieve victory surprisingly, and I didn't even tell my cavalry to charge in. That's how good we are. You see, that's how good we are because we didn't even need our cavalry at that point. You know, absolutely fantastic. Look at that. We actually only lost five troops. Not bad, not bad. But I guess you know what that, that you know what that just says. That just says, look at how how many really high tier units I have in comparison to the opponent. I I guess, I guess that's it because obviously we did eliminate two of the Squig Riders um, very early on in the first round of battle, shall we say? And that really, oh no, he managed to escape. Are you serious? Oh, that's so bad. Oh well, never mind. I mean, if that's gonna, if that, if that's how it is, then that's how it is. You know, I can't really do much about that. We just have to, you know, move on. But that's the thing. I'm actually wondering, prisoner management. Does that actually increase the chances that I can? No, it doesn't. It doesn't say that it increases the chances of me being able to capture him. But I'm kind of wondering whether it does. You know, that's the thing. I'm kind of wondering whether it does actually make a difference. But yeah, there is actually another over here <laughs> but do we actually want to fight him again do we want to fight another one that's the question not sure to be honest i'm thinking right now probably not but eh, it's tempting it's tempting okay um that's the thing with Oggy Boggy, I really want to get him to 11 strength so that he can actually wear that helmet, but that's four levels away. I'm not sure whether he's going to be able to make it there that easily, but I'm going to try, okay? We're going to try, and we're just going to level up his surgery skill even more. 
And then we're just going to get him some more one-handed, because obviously he's going to be a one-handed guy. Maybe he'll use a... I don't know. Maybe he'll use a gun or something like that. I don't know. Maybe he'll use a gun and maybe try to be a little bit uh, useful from range or something. Skizo is obviously really, really good with pole arms as well. And there you have it. So here's the thing. The reason... Uh, now, this is what's really funny about this. You see how, how different that fight went than the last time we went into a larger fight, which was against the Caravan of Britannia, right? Because we, when we went into that large battle, we were unaware of what the enemy had. Obviously, I didn't really look at the composition of the, of the goblins here. I just thought, hey, you know what? We've, we've got pretty similar numbers. And that was basically what I was going for because I knew for a fact that we had relatively high tier troops and the enemy also is is no doubt going to have a you know a semblance of high tier troops as well and that's exactly what's happened here but obviously Britannia is very different in their structure they have some great cavalry and I, I I'm pretty sure you saw exactly what was going on there in regards to the casualties in that fight that we just had where it was basically a bloodbath you know, as, as long as the cavalry, the enemy cavalry, the spider riders and the squig riders and so on and so forth, as long as they can get into your lines, they will almost assuredly do damage, no matter what. Like I said in the previous episode, they will literally almost certainly do damage. And it doesn't matter. That, that's the funny thing as well. It doesn't matter whether it's a caravan or whether it's bandits or whether it's the lowest tier of the low you know, in regards to, you know, let's say that, um, I don't know, let's say that you're in, you're in Realm of Chaos territory. I'm actually just waiting here because I'm thinking that maybe there'll be a, another vassal that will come out of here. Um, but yeah, let's say that generally you're in Realm of Chaos territory. You're looking around for some, you know, Chaos troll groups or whatever. And you think, okay, I'm going to attack these guys. And you're attacking with, you know, Tier 3, Tier 2 troops. And you're going to lose. Never mind. You know, you're just going to lose because... If there's enough Chaos Trolls, and if you don't have enough stopping power, those guys are literally just going to get into your lines, and then they're just going to decimate. And they're going to be completely dominating your entire forces. So, in essence, it doesn't really matter what kind of unit you're fighting, whether it's, as I say, a caravan, looters, a vassal, anyone. Anything has a chance to achieve victory in this game. That's the thing. Anything has a chance to achieve victory in the game. Just, be just because you don't know whether they're going to have something amazing. Like, for example, for me, when I got, when I, you know, when I was attacking the caravan, uh, I thought to myself, okay, the caravan's surely not going to have anything super powerful. But then I remembered that this is Warsword Conquest. And Britannia, well, they're going to have some really, really good troops. And indeed they did. Indeed they did. And that's exactly the reason why we ended up having some problems with them. And it's not because they're a caravan, but it's just because it's Britannia. If we were to fight a Britannian vassal, instead of me achieving victory like I d did just now against the Night Goblins, I'd probably be facing a defeat as well, just because they are like that. That is just what they're like. They are going to have some extremely high tier troops, maybe not even as high tier as the caravans. I'm pretty sure that the modding team might have actually done that on purpose, because they want to make it so that caravans are not as easy to prey upon. Because if you take a look at this, you see you see the lizard man caravan right here? Look at this guy. The, look at that. He's got cold one champions and croxagors, revered guardians, absolutely insane things. Let me actually just have a look at the lizard man kingdom real fast. Where where is that? There we go. Yeah, so look, cold one champions maxed out cavalry huge amounts of those that he's got there revered guardians massive amounts of these infantry and then he also has i, I would assume some skink war chiefs and things like that but there's also a bunch of there's, there's also a croxagore and uh unfortunately it doesn't show the croxagore here i'm actually wondering whether i can even find that i might be able to find it let's have a look i'm, I'm really interested to see what kind of um what kind of crazy stats the uh, the Croxagore actually has. Let's have a look. It's probably going to be a standalone. Yeah, there it is. Okay, look at... Yeah, okay, so it's got 105 HP. This is the thing that you're going to be looking at right here. 105 HP. It is literally going to crush through blocks with the Croxagore axe as well. And it's insane, you know? These are the kinds of things that I'm talking about when it comes to fighting 
well, basically anything in the game, but most notably here, you can see exactly what's going on. They have some amazing troops for a caravan. And I would highly say that I'm going to lose this. If I go in here, I'm going to lose this. However, if I were to go and fight this particular, um, you know, goblin, goblin party, I might actually win. Yeah, I might actually win. That's the thing. It's very much dependent on unit quality, but also what types of units. All right, so we've got 56 against 77 here. Now, this is very, very unlikely that I'll achieve victory, but we are on a really, really nice hill here. So I'm hoping maybe I can take advantage of this. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure the enemy has more than just one Shaman this time. So it's more than likely that they're going to be casting some wonderful spells against us. And that's going to be a little bit of a problem, isn't it? Anyway, we'll just take our standard formation that we usually take whenever we have a bunch of archers, which is archers in the back, infantry in the front. You know, you know how we do things. You've seen a bunch of my series, hopefully. <laughs> if you haven't, then why haven't you? <laughs> I'm just kidding, obviously. If you want to, then I'd highly recommend some of the Pendor ones. And or Warsword, but obviously if, you, if you're seeing this, then maybe you've already watched the Warsword one. I don't know. Anyway, let's hope that some of my higher tier gunners will actually be able to hit some people. Ah, there we go! They are actually hitting some people. That's nice. Okay. Yeah, the Poison Wind Globideers are obviously going to be particularly useless at this particular range, right? Okay, here we go. Night Goblin Shaman has cast Gork will fix it. Nearby F7 attack orders. Special troops have special abilities. What? Have special abilities hexed? I have no idea what that even means. Okay. Well, I don't really need to worry about that. Okay, so now they're actually charging in. Okay, where's the squig? Okay, I need to kill the squig. Oh, no, never mind. Apparently, he's not actually wanting to kill me. Um, okay, I'm going to have to deal with this. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, this is this is going to be a problem. I'm going to have to get in here. I'm going to have to get in here with my sword because these spider riders are just too difficult to let live. There we go. Okay, very nice and simple. And now we can tell these guys to charge in. Tell my cavalry to charge in this time. And hopefully we'll get something going here. This is... Uh, 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 where are the fanatics? I need to kill the fanatics as soon as possible. Okay, I've got to be careful here. Because I can still die really, really easily, by the way. I don't know whether you've noticed. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, he knocked me down. He knocked me down. I don't have a healing potion either. Oh, dear. All right, well... Uh, I think we should be okay. Oh no, my rat ogre just got killed. Okay, that's kind of a bit harsh. Oh no, there's still a fanatic alive. If this, oh no, there's still a fanatic alive. This might be a problem. The fanatic is just, it's just going to feast upon us pretty dramatically here. At least we've killed this. Have they killed the fanatic yet? No, they haven't. Oh no. This is a big, big problem right here. This is a big, big problem. Maybe we'll still be okay. If they can just... Oh, they killed the fanatic. Okay. Whew. That's all that matters. Just killing the fanatic was a really, really big deal. Now, obviously, we still have to deal with the night goblin snipers. Warplock engineers are dying. That's not very good. Okay. Yeah, these guys. Come on. Kill, kill the shaman. Kill the shaman. There he is. Yeah, I really... Oh, I really need to find some... I uh, really need to find some more potions, to be honest. That really would have helped us to survive this. But I guess that just goes to show, you know, sometimes that's just not going to happen, you know. Uh, can, can, can these guys actually do something? Uh, is, are, okay, question. Are the Necropolis Knights actually good? Because from my perspective, they don't seem particularly strong. At least, well, for right now, they, they seem to be having some issues just killing the, the um, most standard of troops. And most of, my, most of my snipers, or shall we say most of my gunners, are being killed by the snipers. Which I'm not a big fan of. Um, just primarily, I suppose, because the gunners are not really able to reload as fast. And I think that's primarily the reason. But yeah, as you can see, look at that. It came down to the wire. Came down to the wire right there. Even though we had a significant advantage by being on the hill. But I guess he did outnumber us a slight amount. But how much, how much renown are we going to get for this, by the way? We did have a battle advantage of minus two as well. But we got 12 renown. Okay, not too bad. Erasmus is upset. Oh, and he managed to escape as well. Oh, that's so sad, isn't it? That's really, really sad. Okay, well, the one good thing about this is that we are now able to take a huge amount of these guys and actually rescue them. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to just take um, some of these. They've got some Skaven here as well. 
And basically, okay, so now here's the thing. What I'm doing right now is I am literally taking troops just so that I have people. All right, that's it. That's the only reason. I am literally just taking them because I, I need to have people to be able to escape this territory because otherwise we're just going to be limping around with basically no troops whatsoever and it's going to be extremely difficult. I can only assume that maybe... Do you think... You think the reason why we're not able to capture these guys is because I don't have any prisoner management? Is that actually the case? Because here's the thing. I don't have any, you see, but I do have six according to the fact that I have, uh, you know, troops, you know, because it, it scales with, with troops. Going to go for some more poisoned wind globadiers. I feel like maybe we were missing out on quite a few of those. Maybe that was the reason why we were having so many issues there. And otherwise, I'm just going to move on. Yes, I know, I know, he doesn't want it to turn into a bloodbath, but I can't really do much about that. Sometimes you're just going to have to take the losses, sir. All right, let me just see here. I need to make sure that I don't get attacked by this guy and that I don't get trapped by the patrol either. There we go. Okay, nice and easy, nice and easy. All right, so yeah, that's the thing. I'm kind of wondering now whether I do need to take a point in prisoner management, but I, I, I don't think so somehow. I think it's just bad luck. Or at least I hope. I hope it is just bad luck. Because if it isn't, then, well, then I'm going to need to take a point in it. And then I've basically been wasting my time a little bit here. But we did get some nice renown gains for it. And we were able to uh, test our metals. Uh, you know, suffice it to say, we actually did not too badly. Although I did get eliminated pretty, well, pretty awfully, to be honest, in that uh, in that one right there. You know, obviously, I didn't have an, I didn't have any healing potions. I started with forty percent HP. You know, all that wonderful stuff. We believe the fortress will be worth the effort to take it. Arguilon, Arguilon, where where is that? Where is Ar Oh, there it is. Okay, they're attacking the wood elves. All right, so I guess I'm going to go over and actually help them out a little bit. And, oh, oh, there's another one. Wait, do you think we can actually fight him? He's only got 56, but he's got six squig riders. He has six squig, squig riders, and he has two doom diver river trolls. Are you serious? Ooh, okay, yeah, I'm actually not entirely sure. I think that we're going to have some issues if we... Um, if we try to fight this guy. However, I kind of still want to try. Uh, let's, okay, let's see. Let's see what actually happens here. Maybe I'll be able to. I'm just going to try to, um, I'm just going to try to bait this guy as best as I can. And obviously, I'm going to need Oggy Boggy to get up. Because at the moment, he is still uh, not looking particularly healthy. And I think he's finally... Oh, no. Are you serious? There's another one now. No, no, no. He can leave me alone. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, that's good. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Where are you going? Where are you going? Come back here. Come back here. Okay, we got 55 out of 64 now. That is a little better. And we'll just see what we can do about this. All right. So, uh, yeah, I kind of just abandoned the whole, you know, attacking that uh, Night Goblin vassal. The main reason is I took a look secondarily at my composition. And as you could no doubt probably imagine, because we've lost so many Skaven troops, I'm mostly using really low-ish to mid-tier um, undead. And while they are not terrible, they are certainly not going to do the same kind of thing that we are expecting the Skaven troops to do. And so as a result, we are at a fundamental disadvantage. And even though we do have Poisoned Wind Globadiers, obviously, Poisoned Wind Globadiers being obviously fantastic and we like them a lot, they are still not going to be enough to be able to do the damage that we needed to. And I actually took a look at the trolls as well. I'm actually going to show you the trolls that they had after this. If I can actually find them, maybe I'll be able to, uh, maybe I'll actually be able to show you there because um, that is going to be, oh, 11 renown, really? An 11 renown for completing this? Oh, okay, that's actually hilarious. Sure, yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to get that. That's great. Okay, so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start getting rid of some of these guys because we are not a terribly big fan of using the skeletons and then we're just going to be uh, recruiting some more um, some more rats, obviously, that's what we want. And uh, yeah, so I'm basically just going to show you this now because I am so incredibly intrigued about this because I never would have expected to find something like this in the Night Goblin armies. But they are uh, these guys. 
these yes they have troll clubs and they also have regenerate and all this wonderful stuff and as you can see they have 96 hp now this this isn't actually the entire thing that they have doom diver river trolls have another ability and as far as i am aware wait a minute did i actually just quit out of all of that yes i did yes anyway the point is that they have another ability because I, I actually have someone else that is uh, that I know that is playing this, and he sent me a message, and basically he said that some of the trolls, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the Doom Diver ones, I think that's what he said, but basically these Doom Diver river trolls, because there were two in that guy's army, and that's the reason why I was really wary about it initially, and why I was waiting for such a long amount of time, because otherwise I would have just gone straight in, right? But I was really worried about those specifically because I seem to recall in the back of my mind that there was something going on with them. And I'm actually pretty pleased that I didn't go in because of that fact. Because I took a look at the message again, and yes, it is indeed the Doom Diver River Trolls. And so those guys, they actually have an ability that allows them to inflict AOE fire damage. AOE fire damage, if you can think about that. And I'm not sure whether it's them or whether it's some other other troop, but whenever they are present, they seem to get the kill. They seem to get the kill for that stuff. And so that's the thing that we have to be really, really careful of in the future when fighting the Night Goblins. No wonder that guy wanted to attack us so badly, because he knew, probably, that he would be able to achieve victory, but obviously I didn't even bother. So you know, I'm out of there. Thank you very much. Okay, so we can we can we can actually take care of these guys. Hopefully, I'm not going to get shot or killed or or lanced or anything like that. Thankfully, these guys are just going to absolutely run in here and just get murdered by the poison wind globadiers. Hopefully, as you can see, a bunch of those going off, a bunch of the grenades being thrown. I guess you could kind of call them grenades. And all we need to do is just. We just need to throw our, throw our units at them, basically. Just throw our units at them. And uh, they've got a bunch of Braganza's Besiegers, which I'm not a big fan of, of course. They are very, very strong. Or at least I feel like they're very strong. And I really do not want them to do any more damage than they have to. So I'm just going to try to do as much damage as I can here. Oh yeah, by the way, we are finally going to be getting Dodge and or Ignore Pain in this episode. Alcatani Fellowship killed me. Mm, yeah, that is to be expected. But we should be absolutely fine here, I hope. I actually hope we'll be okay here. Maybe we won't. <laughs> Wouldn't that be hilarious? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, the point is, yeah, we're finally going to get Ignore Pain or Dodge. I'm not entirely sure which one. I think Ignore Pain, I seem to remember, is quite expensive. I think it's about 12,000. Maybe it's 15,000. I'm not sure. I think it's somewhere around that number. And we might have some issues with them. We might have some issues actually like affording it. And so I'm thinking to myself, maybe I want to get Dodge instead. But then if Dodge is just as expensive, well, which one is better? That's the question. I'm thinking right now that probably Ignore Pain is better because that's probably going to be active much more often than Dodge. Even though Dodge technically has the ability to completely negate an entire attack. So that's something. You know, that's something to, to very much take into account because if you can avoid an entire attack in comparison to just absorbing a little bit of every single attack, then maybe it's going to be better. But I actually want to get both if I can because that's going to significantly, and I'm talking about significantly, increase the survivability of Slive. And he's going to be able to just go wherever he wants and do whatever he wants. And he's going to be absolutely fantastic. So yeah, 10 renown for us right there. And ooh, not bad. Pretty good loot, actually, surprisingly enough. wasn't Definitely wasn't expecting such good loot, but there you go. All right. So now we can go back on over to Putrid Stump. Got a bunch of people that leveled up. Obviously, I don't really care whether we lose people here or there. Because at the end of the day... That's exactly what they're all about. The Skaven is all about just overwhelming your opponent as much as you possibly can and just leveling them up that way. So even if we do lose some people, it really does not matter at all, uh, at least to me, because we can then recruit them very easily. Like, for example, if we go back over here and we... Oh, well, unfortunately, this is not actually uh, yet active again. We can recruit here. Look at that, another 16... 
and we can just let Erasmus do his training as well. Technically, I would have actually done that if I if I wanted to, but um, I was kind of oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, anyway, the point is, um, I probably would have waited a little bit longer for Erasmus to level them up into clan rats at least, because Skaven slaves are literally the worst. They are really, really bad. That's exactly the reason why we lost against that caravan as well, just purely because we had such low tier units. And that's going to happen anywhere, basically, as well, by the way. That's one of those things where... If you if you play the base game right and not not you, you don't play Warsaw Conquest and you're you're starting off and you go into a battle against the I don't know mercenary troop or uh, I don't know just a vassal and they have you know significantly powerful troops you're just gonna die anyway it doesn't matter whether you know it doesn't matter what you have it's just literally gonna be that they're gonna kill you so that's that's exactly what happens okay so is there a tournament going on here no that's unfortunate okay there is a tavern so <laughs> oh no oh it's gonna give me nightmares isn't it let's not fall off here again shall we yes i mean that that was funny so you know that was funny okay so we'll just sell these guys and then we'll go to the marketplace because we got a bunch to sell here and there's the ball and chain. I kind of want to use this, to be honest. I kind of want to use it. But we have the Dragon Tooth Katana, and it's basically not even necessary. So, probably just going to sell it. I can always buy one if I want one at some point later on. And there's obviously our legendary staff right there. There's the Morning Star. There's the helmet for Mr. Oggy Boggy. And uh, we can just sell this as well. There we have it. Okay, so there's another 3,000. So let's go into the arena now because obviously now we can purchase something. So I'd like to learn some new combat skills. So I'd like to learn the dodge skill. How much is it? 2,000? It's only 2,000? Really? I literally should have gotten this way, way, way before. Okay, let's learn the ignore pain skill. That's 12,000. Yeah, as I thought. So that's extremely expensive. As you can see, I now have only 491, which is quite funny in itself. What about the Guildmaster? Do you have anything for me? About the job you gave me? Oh, you actually gave me something already? Oh yeah, that's to eliminate those pirates, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, good luck getting that done. That's all I can say. Yeah, good luck getting that done. Okay, well, I can only hope that Erasmus is actually going to start training our Skaven slaves. And um, I wouldn't actually mind testing out my new abilities, because we got a bunch. So Skeezel's actually given us a quest as well, because he actually wants to go into a dungeon with us. So I'm thinking, you know what, shall we go to a dungeon that we haven't been to before? I think that sounds like a pretty fun idea, but which one? Which one? Uh, we haven't gone to Kavarok Dungeon. It's over there. Alright, let's go over there. It's pretty close by as well, so it makes sense. Right? Right? I think, it's, yeah, I think it should be fun. And let's hope Erasmus is actually starting to train people. Ah, what's this? Oh yeah, renew your contract. Yeah, sure. I'll renew the contract. Why not? And uh, who knows, maybe we're going to become a vassal with them at some point. And or let's just take a look here. Um, why is he not actually training? Is he actually training my people and I just can't see it or what? No, he must be training them. He must be training them. But yeah, we need we need money pretty badly, actually, quite funnily enough. Yes, look, there's a caravan. It's our nightmare. It's the nightmare of the caravan once again. I, I still, I, you know, I actually think that maybe we would still lose. <laughs> I actually feel like we would still lose even now. I'm going to assume. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, these escaped slaves actually wanted to fight the caravan, as far as I'm aware. And I'm I'm not actually sure. I'm pretty... I'm, I think I'm pretty sure that they would have lost. Even though they have 100. I think 27 versus 100, even though they are farmers, that wouldn't have made any difference. I feel like the escaped slaves still would have lost. The corrupted treekin, are they actually really dangerous? I'm going to assume yes. Oh, uh, no, they're running from me. Okay, that's good at least, because I really do not want to fight the tree kin. They're going to be, uh, I think, probably pretty dangerous. Okay, there we go. There's another 4,000. Very nice indeed. There's a forest goblin camp as well. And let's actually just have a look-see here. Yeah, we got some more level-ups. Yes, there we go. I'm not entirely sure. Why am I not getting messages, by the way? Am I not, am I not supposed to get messages? Let me actually have a look here. Okay. No, no, no. It is telling me about the about the training and everything. Oh, okay. Uh, that's kind of interesting. All right. Well, that's fine. Okay. So Skeezel is actually in my adventuring party already. Oh, the, this dungeon is long in length. Right. Okay. Well, bear in mind, I don't actually have any healing potions. 
So I'm either going to have to play extremely, extremely, um, shall we say, efficiently here, um, or I don't even know what. I think what I'm going to do, kind of wondering whether I should use the long rifle. I'm going to use the, no, you know what? No, 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 I can't do that. If I use the long rifle, it's going to be way too heavy. I don't want that. I want to reduce the amount of weight that I have as much as possible, because as far as I'm aware, doesn't that affect the dodge chance? Doesn't it affect the dodge chance? I think so. I think I read somewhere. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Game concepts. Let me see if there's actually something going on. Ah, here we go. Dodge gives you a chance to dodge any incoming attack. The higher your athletics and strength and the lower your encumbrance, see, that's exactly what I was talking about, the better your chances of dodging. Your chances of dodging ranged weapons are reduced the faster the speed of the missile, but a high agility can negate some of this reduction. Aha. The higher your iron flesh, the more of the blow you can brush off. So we need huge amounts of iron flesh. And what about regeneration? Can only be obtained for the player via a ring you can buy from Cyrus the Bright. The ring is race restricted, but it still works in battle if it is in your inventory so anyone can use it. The ring gives you a chance to regenerate health in battle intermittently. Whoa. Cyrus the Bright, but it's race restricted. Highly doubt Skaven can use it, right? Highly doubt Skaven can use it, but who knows? Maybe we'll be able to. Anyway, let's go and choose our companions. I have no idea who to actually take in here, to be honest, because I don't want to take in the Rat Ogres or anyone that's really, really high tier. And we don't have anyone else. We still don't have Ripnich with us, by the way, because I just haven't had the opportunity to, you know, go and find him. So I guess we're just going to go in. Um, should I increase the damage difficulty? Or uh, I'm just going to put enemy uh, selection being on focused and we'll increase the damage modifier. Shall we? Yeah, why not? I think it's fun to do so. Let's try it out. Okay, yeah, we've got Skaven. We're, f we're fighting Skaven here. Okay, I'm just going to try and avoid damage as much as I possibly can. We've got dodge now as well, by the way, so obviously that's going to make a huge difference to us. Okay, these guys are actually really, really easy. At least at the moment they are. Okay. <laughs> what? Why was that so simple? Why was that so simple? That's kind of weird. All right, so yeah, um, as someone very, uh, very subtly suggested, I should probably follow, you know, just have our, have our companions follow me. And uh, personally for me, I always find that telling companions to follow is a surefire way of getting them killed because most of the time they don't actually attack. At least that's what I've noticed in the past. They seem to just ignore any kind of... Um, you know, retaliation, shall we say, and they seem to just kind of stand there and let and let themselves get killed, you know? That's usually what has happened to me in the past, at least. Okay, so let's see if I can actually deal with these guys. This is going to be a bit annoying. Uh, yep, yep, as you can see. This guy has a longer reach weapon, so he's able to... Wow, he was actually doing a really good job of actually keeping us at range. And here comes the... Uh, this is the exit. Ah, oh, I don't really want to search for the, for the chest, all things considered, so I'm just going to go forward. It's going to be way too, way too much time investment to, for me to go back and actually look for all that stuff. Is that the chest over there? That is the chest over there. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. Well, this, this is obviously one of those times when you don't want your companions to follow you, because otherwise I'm not going to be able to go over here. Oh no, I hate these things. I am literally one of the worst people when it comes to platformers, and this is... Oh no, this is so bad. Okay, there we go, we did it. Okay, so if I can just walk along here, and then walk along there. There we go, got it. Okay, ooh, not bad, not bad, alright. Not a, not a terribly bad um, little bit of loot right there, not, not too bad. And um, yeah, I, I'm actually kind of surprised I spotted that, to be honest. I was thinking to myself, there's no way I'm going to see anything here but yeah there we go oh he dodged the attack of course you did sir he dodged it again how how dare you how dare you sir get out of here thank you okay these guys really know what's up they are just literally running at us with huge amounts of troops right now okay yeah. my my companions are just holding position right there very much on purpose by the way i'm not actually wanting them to take any damage right now 
because I can handle these guys coming in one at a time. It's super, super simple for us to do that. These pack masters must, ha must, must have absolutely insane iron flesh because ignore pain is soaking so much damage for them. I can't even believe it. Anyway, let's tell my guys to follow me and then we should very easily be able to exit here. We've already gotten the chest. I absolutely love this environment, by the way. This is probably one of my favorite levels just purely for the fact that it is so simple and I don't really need to you know, search around a great deal, but that doesn't mean that the other environments are bad by any means, because every single environment in these dungeons has been super, super fun for me, maybe with the exception of one. And I think you know which one that is, but yeah, from my perspective right now, there is actually one additional rat here that I can kill, this guy. Or not, as the case may be. Because apparently he's just running around in circles doing some weird thing. And now I'm going to miss. What a classic. What a classic. I don't even I don't even know sometimes. Sometimes that's just literally the most hilarious thing in the world. Because I'm like, oh yes, I'm just going to shoot him. He's got no shield. Should be easy. And then, no, nope. Nope. Just going to, just going to fail. Okay, yeah, this is a, this is a pretty interesting section here. Okay, yeah, uh, just follow me, sir. Just follow me. Thank you. Don't really want him to go in there. There we go. I'm just taking the lead. It's actually quite funny that I'm the one taking the lead here, considering I have basically no health potions. And if I die, then that is game over, you know? If I had health potions, that would really make a big difference. There's the chest. Super nice and easy for us to find this one, that's for sure. Ooh, we got a nice helmet there. Hmm. Yeah, it's okay, but we got some velvet, which is actually going to sell for a pretty decent amount. So uh, that's not too bad either. I like that. Oh, there's Skeezel. I actually got a bit of a fright from him. I actually thought that he was an enemy. Let's just kill this guy or not as the case. Skeezel, are you serious? Uh, you've drawn, oh, drawn too much attention. Okay, great. Yeah, that's because I've used my... It's because I've used my gun, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Hello, fr hello, friends. Let's do this. Okay. Come on, Erasmus. Can you please not take damage, sir? Thank you. All right. I'm just going to get out of here as soon as possible. Oh, I cannot exit while enemies are nearby. Of course not. Please don't die. Kill that plague monk really fast. Okay, here they come. Ah, it seems like enemies can't actually get up the ladder, as you can see. Look at this. This ladder is um, is not walkable for these particular types of enemies, by the looks of things. Okay, dungeon room four. All right, we. Uh, I think um, this is a long dungeon, right? Yeah, this is a long dungeon. So someone actually outlined in the comments, very helpfully, by the way. Thank you very much for this. You told me that long dungeons last seven levels, as far as I'm aware. Medium is six, and short is five. So that's a lot more reasonable than uh, what I initially suspected it was. So I very much appreciate you letting me know about that. Erasmus got himself murdered, which is to be expected, of course. Even though I did tell him. <laughs> uh, did, I, did I tell him to hold position or, or, or follow me or whatever it was? I think I told him to, to follow me, right? If I didn't, then obviously that's on me, but I don't think so. I don't think he... Uh, I don't think he needed to be told at that point. He was right next to me, so it's a bit strange, but oh well, never mind. Oh, hello there. Hello there, sir. Goodbye. Okay, we are not doing too badly, but bear in mind, this is now all up to me. And uh, that's not a good idea, is it? No, that's not a good thing. Okay, let's go this way. I'm going to be very careful here. I can only hope that the... Um, oh yeah, pff, these guys are so hard, hard to kill. They have so much survivability. Pretty crazy. Yeah, I was kind of hoping that the chest would be in the same place it was here last time. Oh, it is. It is in the same place. Oh, these guys have no idea that I'm even here. I'm being sneaky. Sneak mode engaged by the looks of things. Oh, hello. 10,000. A lordly white wolf knight helmet. And 5,000 for some skeleton armor. Oh, wow. And then they... It's so funny. They give you literally some of the best possible loot in terms of cash that I've ever seen. And then in the same exact chest, they give you something that's worth six. And I just go, hmm, <laughs> that's quite funny. All right, so what have we got going on here? What is this? We've got a really, really bad situation for me right now. I dodged the attack, that's wonderful. Uh, my ignore pain isn't really, um, isn't really doing much actually. 
My ignore pain seems to be not really absorbing that much damage right now. I'm a bit worried about that, actually. Okay, there we go. Nice. Oh, I'm actually really, really surprised that I was able to dodge all of that. Or not dodge it, but block it. Okay, let's try and dodge this. Yeah, don't get killed, don't get killed. Okay, now we can just avoid this guy if we can. He's reloading. I should charge at him. There we go. It forced him to switch to melee. That's how we're going to get him. And I, you know what I really love about this actually right now? The music. And if I have to mute this music, I'll be quite sad because um, obviously if I have a copyright problem, then I have to remove it. But that's the thing. If you can't hear this music, then I will describe it to you right now. It is a very jolly tune. And uh, it's, like, it's like what you might hear in the Shire. And it's quite funny because we are in a dungeon slaughtering Skaven. Yeah, it's very amusing. Oh, hello. Yeah, and I thought I might shut up for a second there just so that you could hear a little bit of the tune. Even though, to be honest, I think um, maybe it will be, um, maybe it will have to be muted. I'm not entirely sure, but if not, then you would have heard it. And if it was muted, then, well, then you wouldn't. So <laughs> anyway, let's move on. I didn't. I oh, we did it. We did it, and I actually completed the uh, <laughs> completed the quest for Mr. Skeezel. And oh, hello there! There is a new legendary weapon. Look at that! Plus twenty percent base damage from this. Obviously, as you've seen here, the Dragon Tooth Katana, in my opinion, is still much better. But the White Sword is very good if you want to use something that has more reach. That's the thing that you really want to use it on. And, and look, 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 there's actually some stuff maybe for Oggy Boggy. That's looking pretty good. We also have a Chaos Dwarf Carbine here. I'm actually wondering, can you... Huh. Can you fire multiple bullets with this thing? Maybe. Maybe we'll be able to. But there you go, we actually conquered it. 29 renown for that too. That is fantastic. I'm loving that. I'm absolutely loving that. And Skeezel actually leveled up, so we're going to get him another point of strength. Why not? And, um, yeah, I mean, he basically did nothing in that, didn't he? Well, there's one thing that we really, really need to do, and that is to level up our strength more. And I think, actually, one of the best things that we could possibly do is continue leveling our agility. I have, I have actually let that fall by the wayside a little bit because I kind of thought that maybe going for strength would be a little bit better. Because, obviously, if we go for more strength, we're going to have the ability to increase our HP. And that is fundamentally going to increase our survivability, of course. It's going to make all the difference in the world. I might actually decide to go in and attack these Skaven Tunnelers, potentially. If we go in against the Skaven Tunnelers, we might get a good amount of experience. Let's see. Are they too fast for me? No, no. Oh, they... What? Why did they turn around and all of a sudden want to attack me? I'm a bit worried now. Oh, no, no, we're fine. All right. I mean, according to the renown value, at least according, you know, that, generally it's, it's actually quite a funny thing. If you are looking for difficulty in terms of battles, usually it's not really the best idea to look at battle advantage. I mean, yeah, sure, battle advantage does give you a a bit of an idea as to how you might win or lose a a, a specific battle, but I actually think a more accurate Measurement is renown, because the more renown you get for a particular battle, the harder the enemies are, and it goes up in one increments, whereas battle advantage has hidden decimal places, if you if you know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, anyway, the fact is, that's the reason why me getting five renown for this is actually not that... Um, that, that means it's not going to be that dangerous, you know. We don't really have to worry about it too much. I'm actually just going to tell these guys to charge in. There's no real need for me to worry about them. Oh, this guy. Oh, look at him. He's taken three hits from the legendary sword. How dare you? How dare you take three hits from it, sir? Okay, there we go. Yeah, th these guys just take three hits every single time. No, no wonder they're really, really dangerous. Dodging the attack. Dodging the attack. Yes. These guys really know what's up. Look at them. They are literally just coming at me and basically just tanking every little bit of damage that is coming their way. 
Thankfully, we do have the ability to insta-kill them 16% of the time, so that's really making a big difference. And how many have we lost so far? We've actually lost two. I'm actually quite surprised that we've lost anyone, to be honest, but there you go. Let's tell our... Uh, did I tell my infantry to charge in? I think I did. Let's tell our archers to charge in now as well, just so that they can get into effective range, because sometimes they do need to move a little bit closer. And we can hopefully get them more level ups. I mean, I want to level up my clan rats the most. And I'm just kind of saddened, actually, that I wasn't able to complete the Night Goblin quest, but we did defeat two vassals. We defeated two vassals, and yet we still weren't able to capture either one of those. So it's actually quite sad. That's that's one thing that I actually really, really miss from, from Bannerlord, because obviously, from a realistic perspective, it makes sense that you're going to be able to basically capture any enemy that you've beaten in battle, most of the time you're going to probably be able to capture them. Whereas in Warband, that's obviously not the case. It's very much a you know percentage percentage chance. And um, yeah, it's a bit sad, but there you go. A large bag of warpstone cartridges. Huh. I will take these because I'm kind of wondering, can I use them? I can. That's actually hilarious. I'm actually not entirely sure. Do they do, they do something cool or are they just... I don't know. Are they just random, you know, funny looking green bullets? I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the case. I don't know. Anyway, uh, what's going on here? Ooh, now look at this. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Now the Skaven are probably going to lose this battle. No, I'm obviously joking. They're not going to lose this battle. If it was me, I'd probably lose it. But you know, it's Britonia. I feel like we have a bit of a stigma surrounding uh, Britonia now, or shall we say a bit of a complex surrounding them. Um, just purely because of that initial, you know, first contact kind of situation that we had against them. And now I'm always thinking to myself, hmm, I'm probably going to lose if I go into any battle against them. You know what I mean? And it's it's quite funny because that's not how it's going to be, you know? That's, that's, what, that's the funny thing. I don't think that we're going to lose every single battle. It's just a, a bit of a... a bit of a weird sort of, uh, shall we say, mindset that I have now. So we're, we're eventually going to be returning to fighting them. Don't worry about that. We will be fighting them at some point. Clan helmet. Hmm, that is actually a Skaven helmet. So um, yeah, we're going to get 8,000 from the loot from the dungeon. Actually, really surprising we got so much, but I'm very pleased about that. Let's go for some more Master Gunners. More Scryer Gisales can only be good. We've got five of them already, which is quite nice. And let's just increase that. There we have it. Okay, yeah, so wait a minute. Skeezel? Skeezel, where are you? Does he have a helmet? I think he has a helmet. Yes, he does. But this one is better for him ever so slightly. And I'm kind of thinking right now that maybe I should change my heavy... Uh, well, change my assassin armor with his heavy clan armor. I'm actually thinking that maybe that would be a better idea. Because if I switch the, these around, I am going to lose armor, obviously. But you see the weight... The weight is going to be dramatically reduced. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe that's what I want to do. If I take a look here, it goes down to 27 from 34. That's only 7. Is that going to make a big difference? I don't know. I kind of prefer the armor, to be honest, because we're inevitably going to be taking some damage sometimes. So I personally feel like we should probably just leave it the way it is. Let's see what Oggy Boggy can actually wear, because we do actually have something better for him. Yes. Yes. Look at that. Oggy Boggy, very nice. And you know what? I'm going to give him this Chaos Dwarf Carbine. And he can use these cartridges as well. There we have it. Maybe he's going to be um, kind of good at shooting. I mean, he obviously has 50 in firearms, but this is the best thing that he could possibly get, I'm going to assume at least. I mean, right now, this is the best thing that he could get. Let's see if there's actually a tournament or something going on here. Oh, we can buy a ship. Yeah, ships I'm not that big a fan of. Um... <laughs> I don't know why. I'm just not a big fan of them. Okay, I'm just going to sell the clan helmet. Just going to move these things up here. Obviously, we got the white sword as well. That's a legendary sword. Who should I give this to? That's the thing. Who do you think? Who do you think I should give that to? I actually don't know right now. Let's sell that. Sell this. Sell... Ah, actually, wait a minute. That's 13 strength. And it's two-handed. No, he's never going to use that. All right, all right. That's fine. Let's just buy a bunch of food, and then we can move on. What about the tavern? Is there actually anything here? I'm looking for... Um, oh, there's measles. Oh, okay. Hello there, sir. Yes, please rejoin us. 
And, uh, oh, there's Corvass, but I'm not going to be taking him. He's, uh, he's technically a Dark Elf, so I'm not really, uh, I'm not really looking for that. However, Skaven Merchant, hello, what do you have for us? Ooh, hello! Okay, you've got some amazing gear. You've got some amazing gear, sir. All right, wait a second, wait a second. We really, re we, we do. We, we really do. We want to purchase some of this stuff. Okay, I want to purchase the Skaven Warlord armor, but it is too expensive. Can you believe it? Uh, I really want to purchase this. It's lighter than what... Oh, no, it's not lighter than what I'm currently wearing. Oh, it's not lighter. Okay, well, maybe I shouldn't get it then. Do you think I should get it? I don't know. It kind of makes me want to get it super badly right now, but it also makes me a little bit dubious because I'm thinking to myself, do I want to? Do I really want to invest 16,000 in making my encumbrance heavier but look at how much look at how much armor it provides us pretty significant amounts oh i don't know what do you think what do you think tell me tell me in the comments what do you think should we get the should we get the armor maybe it's going to be a good idea but it is going to reduce the amount of chance that we have to dodge and that's one of the main things that i kind of thought would actually provide us with significant survivability so i'm not sure about that I was kind of hoping to find a potion seller in here as well, by the way. That was the main reason why I wanted to come in here. There's Kazdon. Mm, yeah, okay, yeah. So at least we found measles. I guess that's actually kind of decent. Uh, do, do, do you have any job for me? Do you have a job for me? Uh, kidnapped daughter. Mm, sure. Where is it? Uh, ka uh, Karaz Dron. Karaz Dron? Where is that? Where where is Karaz Dron? That is so that is so far away, isn't it? What do you bet that is super far away in like what Dwarven territory or something? Let me actually have a look. Where is it? Karaz Dron show on map. Where is it? It's up here. Are you serious right now that it's all the way over this way? What? Are you joking? It's all the way up here. Wow. Okay, that's hilarious. Okay, fine, fine, fine. We might as well, right? We might as well do it. Uh, there's Britannia. Okay, yeah, we're just going to avoid them for the moment. Thank you very much. It's so funny. Their full vassals have less high-tier troops than the caravans. Did you see that? <laughs> it seems like it, at least, because that caravan that we fought had two paladins, and that guy over there, that vassal with, you know, 80 troops or whatever he had, that had one paladin. And the paladins are obviously the insane, really high-tier troops. Anyway... As you pass a small Arabi prisoner train, the men in the back cry out at you to free them, and that they will pay you gold if you do. The guards quickly silence them, although you notice the train is not heavily defended, and you would make short work of them if you wished. What do you do? Kill the guards and rescue the men, ignore them and continue with your journey. Uh, pff, I, I could always use the cash. I could buy the warlord armor if we get more cash. So let's do it. Your troops quickly overpower the guards and release the men. They reveal that they are merchants and were arrested with no justification. They find their belongings in a hold and give you all of their gold as a reward. And and they gave us a thousand gold and now I've actually reduced my relation with the Sultanate of Araby. Uh, well, that is to be expected, of course. Do I care about that, really? Not, not particularly, because we are quite far away from them. And just being reduced by one, I don't really think that makes too much of a difference. We've got to be a bit careful of the Beastmen, though. Or do we? I'm actually not entirely sure. Should I just fight them? I, I don't actually know. Maybe sometimes we should just go in and just fight randomly. I mean, look at this. We've got 19 skirmishers and a bunch of clan rats all the way at the bottom of the, of the, uh, of the list here, which is kind of terrible because we want them to be in the thick of the battle immediately. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to wait until daytime. I really hate fighting at night, by the way. I find fighting at night to be extremely annoying because I can't see anything. So here we go. Oh, hello. All right, so the purpose, obviously, of this particular battle is not really for the renown, but it is for the experience to level up my troops. And maybe I'm actually going to be able to use my, my gun a little bit as well. That would be quite nice. So let's just get my forces over here, over there. Let's get these guys over here as well. Okay, let's see if I can actually hit someone from here. That's obviously going to get me some... Oh, nice! Okay, hello. That was a nice hit. Can we get another one? That's the question. No, it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, it's going to take me a long time to reload this thing, unfortunately. And it seems like my forces are doing a relatively decent job. Obviously, here's the thing. If they can get experience... Oh, Oggy Boggy is actually getting a kill too. Nice. Okay. 
Oh, wow. Okay, this is actually a much better idea than I anticipated. I thought to myself, hey, you know what? We're probably going to get a couple of kills. We're probably going to, you know, be able to do something. And my, my forces will be able to, you know, at least kill, I don't know, five of them or something like that. But I didn't expect so many kills to come out from this, which is pretty impressive. Okay, I'm just going to tell everyone to charge in. I want everyone to go in here. I want my clan rats to get, in, get stuck in. I want my companions... I want absolutely everyone. Doesn't matter if they get killed either. That does not matter to me in the least. If they do get killed, then that's just how it is. But hopefully our surgery skill, Oggy Boggy's surgery skill, will do a good job. And that's what he's there for, isn't it? All right. Yep, there you go. That is indeed a victory for us. Super nice and simple, actually. I mean, obviously, you know, these guys are pretty low tier. But... It's all good experience. Let's see how, let's actually see how much experience we're going to get for it after this. Because then that will determine whether we do something like this in the future as well. Because some of the time, these kinds of things just aren't, aren't worth it. And so this is going to very much give us a, a nice little, shall we say, analysis of what is actually going to be worth us doing in the future. What kinds of activities are good. Because otherwise I'm just going to stick to targeting other things like vassals and uh, maybe even attacking I don't know higher tier mercenary troops or something like that I'm not entirely sure what we can really gain from that but I, I guess we'll see anyway there you go there's a nice little victory for us okay so we got some more of these I'm not really looking to take these hmm a red devil is actually really really good and I'm kind of thinking that maybe I'll just take that because it is a high tier, you know. That's kind of what I'm what I'm mostly going for there. Okay, so let's have a look. What do we get? Okay, so we got pretty good level ups from these. We got seven level ups from those. I'm going to actually start leveling up some veteran clan rats as well. Let's get some scryer gunners. Let's get some more war block engineers. Yeah, all right. So it didn't... It wasn't terrible. But it didn't really provide us with anything super amazing. So I'm probably going to avoid going into battles like that in the future. Beastman Raiders, they don't seem particularly amazing. Now, the only time that I will probably consider going in against them again is if we have uh, maybe reason to suspect that they have decent prisoners, maybe, that we can rescue. Then in that case, then yeah, yeah, then we're going to go in there. Because if they've got a bunch of rat ogres, for example, then that's obviously going to be an absolutely amazing thing to do. And um, otherwise, here we go. Yeah, so obviously we did end up losing, uh, well, failing the quest. Yeah, I mean, pff, I can't, as I said, I tried, right? I tried, and if I... I, I mean, there's no way that I'm going to be able to beat some of those Night Goblins because they just have much better troops than we do. And that's just how it is. There, There is just... It's just a... You know, it's kind of like a, a, a one or a zero at this point. You know, it's kind of like, oh, it's a yes or a no situation at that point because either we're going to win or either we're going to lose. And most of the time, we were going to lose there. And so I did take the opportunity to... Uh, you know, try to get as best of an advantage as possible, but sometimes it just doesn't work. Anyway, I demand that you release the girl now. There we go. And let's go in and attack them. Okay, so this is going to be a super, super simple battle for us. I'm actually just going to charge every single person in here. And our Poisoned Wind Globideers might actually have the ability to completely just win straight up. We could even tell them to skirmish if we wanted to. Maybe it would be an idea to actually tell them to skirmish. Nah, if it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. These guys are going to be super, super easy. And I, and I can also tell my cavalry to charge in straight away as well. Because even though the cavalry may indeed get themselves killed, I don't actually mind about these cavalry too much. If they do get killed, then that's just how it is. They are not Skaven units. So I'm just going to use them as expendable. And that's it. And we're getting some nice kills with our little pistol here as well, which is always nice, isn't it? And it's actually super funny to see humans for once, because we've literally not seen humans for quite some time. I mean, we did fight um, we did fight some pirates not so long ago, but, you know, it, it, when you play a, a total conversion mod like this, and every single unit you face is either undead, skaven, beastman, uh, troll, orc, uh, you know, whatever, what, whatever else, goblin... <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then and then you all of a sudden fight some random bandits that are human. It's such a, it's such a, it, such a weird occurrence. You know, it's like, oh yeah, they, they've got humans in this as well. I forgot about that. <laughs> you know, 
Uh, super funny. Anyway, there you go. We were able to do that. Now we can actually take the daughter back to the village. And yes, come with me. We're going home. There we go. And you're going to give me absolutely terrible loot. So I'm not going to be taking any of that. Thank you very much. But we did get some level ups, as you can see right here. Let's get some more skirmishers, get some of these guys leveled up too. There we have it. Okay. Yeah, so we're actually not doing too badly in terms of our power level in regards to our own forces. I do have seven master gunners, six globideers. Obviously, I could do a lot better with the globideers, but we do have 11 gunners. Well, scryer gunners, shall we say, which is not too bad. They do actually have the ability to kill quite a few. And, well... Uh, the Skaven Underworld is not doing too badly in regards against their, um, you know, against their mortal nemeses, the Bretonians. And I'm going to try to make them pay in the next episode as well. We're going to go to war against the Bretonians, or I'm going to try to in engage one of their vassals or a couple of their vassals, and we'll see how that goes. Maybe we'll be able to, you know, pick off a couple of them. I thank you very much for watching and for all your support so far, and I'll see you next time.